Good morning. How are you? I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And today we're actually going to do a little bit of whale watching. Now, why is it important to watch the whales? Well, if you had a couple of million dollars or maybe even a billion dollars that you wanted to invest in something, you're going to have a team of researchers. That team of researchers is going to give you information. And then based on that information that you've collected from this entire team and from other people outside of your team, you're going to gather all this information together and then you're going to use that information as the basis for a decision that you make. You're going to use that as the basis for the actions you take. And so by watching the whales, watching the institutional investors, we can find out what conclusions they came to from their research. Now, maybe we don't have access to their actual research. Hey, that doesn't matter. We can find out the decision they made by watching what they do instead of watching what they say. And so in this situation, when we talk about whale watching, we're actually talking about watching what actions are the whales taking. Because if we watch those actions, we understand that those actions are backed up by a lot of data, a lot of research, a lot of really smart people coming together and saying, hey, this is a good idea. We need to do this. And they go, hmm, all right, we'll go ahead and take that $5 million and do that with it. And so that's why it's sometimes useful to do a little bit of whale watching. And that's one of the things we're going to do in this video. We're also going to cover uh, the Swiss bank versus, there's a Swiss bank versus Goldman Sachs. Bitcoin is great or terrible and the winner is... So recently, Goldman Sachs came out and they said how terrible Bitcoin is. This Swiss bank is coming out and saying, hey, Goldman Sachs is totally wrong. And we're going to take a look at some of those comments. Also in the news, we're going to look at $25 million buy wall is sitting at $9,500. Now, I've seen some articles and some commentaries out there that talk about Bitcoin hitting $6,000. It could... But it's got this buy wall it has to pass through in order to get down much, much well, below the $9,500 range. And then the final thing that we're going to look at is institutions are accumulating Bitcoin. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas and those ideas are going to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash the like button. Hey, it really helps us out. And we'll be eternally grateful to you. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. If you listen to me, you already know that. This is not financial advice. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this is my opinion. Cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. And be sure, if you're going to invest in anything... I would recommend you read this disclaimer and take it into consideration with any investment you're getting involved with, but especially with cryptocurrency, you really need to understand the risks involved. Now, for the last number of days, I've been including a chart that shows you what happens if you buy cryptocurrency, if you buy Bitcoin, uh, if you buy Bitcoin and you held it for three years. I didn't include that chart in today's video, so if you want to see it, you'll want to go back and look at some of the other charts. But here's the, the bottom line, the big picture, the main point of that chart. Um, if you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin on January 1 of 2017 and then sold it December three years later on December 31st, 2019 you would have received $7,206 for your Bitcoin. In other words, you got seven times your money just because you bought and held Bitcoin for three years. And if you watch the whales, the whales don't do day trading. The whales buy and hold. And so uh, one of the things, cryptocurrency does involve substantial risk of loss, but if you buy and hold for a longer period of time, you're more likely to come out ahead than you are to come out with a loss. And that's been validated by the historical data. 
And if you want to see that chart, it goes through uh, what would have happened if you sold at 2019, 2018, etc. And it covers the entire history of Bitcoin from it was from it from its creation point. Um, and so I recommend taking a look at that chart. The numbers are spectacular and would blow your mind. Now, Swiss Bank says Goldman Sachs is wrong about Bitcoin and predicts a crypto paradigm shift is coming. So in other words, this Swiss bank believes that people's opinions about cryptocurrency are going to change. Um, and so let's dive into it. Swiss quote, head of digital assets, Chris Thomas, released a point by point rebuttal to the Goldman Sachs Bitcoin report. He said, the ultimate decision to buy or sell comes down to whether we believe the price will go higher or lower, and hence, whether someone else is willing to pay a higher lower price for that investment. Bitcoin and select others are the driving force between, behind the paradigm shift which is happening. Goldman Sachs is ignoring the strong foundations of this emerging asset class based on cryptographic principles in a world where many, if not all, assets will be tokenized and trading them will be democratized. So said in another way, we're in a, a world that's changing a whole lot. And if you've been asleep, you may not have noticed that, but anybody who's paying attention, especially with the pandemic, our world will never be the same again. And as a result of that, cryptocurrency, in fact, when you, when you look at what's going on out there with China coming up with their own digital coin, with France and several other countries in the European Union creating their own digital coins, with Facebook talking about their own digital coin, and when Facebook announced their Libra coin, man, did government regulators blow a gasket and wanted, Bitcoin, or wanted uh, Facebook to come in and testify and give them information about what is going on with the Libra cryptocurrency that Facebook is building. And so, bottom line... The world is on the verge of a paradigm shift. Things will be dramatically different in the financial industry. And we may see a lot of other assets. don't like it when it does that. I wonder if there's a way I can turn off this little menu bar. Um, anyway, a lot, of, a lot of assets are going to be tokenized sometime in the future. So uh, the next thing we wanted to cover is there's a crucial... $25 million Bitcoin buy wallet, 9500 Downside is limited. So the chart below shows OKX's Bitcoin price action overlaid with the OBD, OB dominance bands, with there being clear bids stacked from 9420 to 9550 And this chart was shared by uh, Timeless Crypto on Twitter. So you can see here that there's a lot of people wanting to sell their cryptocurrency at the $9,500 price level. And so while they can always cancel those orders and cause that entire ban to go away in a moment, uh, it, at, the, at this particular moment in time, this moment in history, uh, there is a strong resistance to the price of Bitcoin going below the $9,500 level. So you might be reading articles out there where they're talking about that Bitcoin is going to drop below $6,000. While that's a possibility, um, there is enough resistance that it may keep it above the $9,500 price, at least for the short term. So... Data analysts, there continues to be mass Bitcoin accumulation by institutional players. So you can see by this chart here, and this chart was provided on Twitter by uh, Kuroki, K-E-R-O-O-K-E. -E. And what we can see from this chart is this is the amount of Bitcoin that Grayscale has purchased since the halving. And this is the amount of Bitcoin that's been mined since the halving. And the lighter areas represent how much Bitcoin for both of those situations have happened in the last week. And what we can learn from this is that the institutions, the whales, are still buying a lot of Bitcoin. They're buying 
And if you watch what the whales are doing with the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, they have a tendency to just simply buy and hold. And when anybody is buying uh, the, you know, you can go to your uh, TD Ameritrade account, you can go to your Charles Schwab account, you can go to any stock brokerage account if you have a stock brokerage account, and you can buy the ticker symbol GBTC, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And when you buy GBTC, you're actually getting exposure to Bitcoin. Now, those shares, those uh, uh, funds that are traded on the stock market, they sell for about $10, $15 a piece, depending on where the price is floating. I haven't looked at the current price, so maybe it's $20. I'm not sure. Bottom line is, is every time people start buying up some of those trusts, uh, Grayscale turns around and takes that money and actually goes out and purchases real Bitcoin. And so this chart shows um, how, in fact, Grayscale currently owns, um, now this number has changed because they've continued to buy more, but the last time I heard this number, Grayscale owned 1.5% of all Bitcoin in existence. And so Grayscale itself is a whale um, but what we're watching is 80% of the dollars that get invested in the grayscale, according to their uh, SEC reporting, uh, that the SEC reporting from grayscale tells us that 80 to 90% of every dollar bought on the grayscale Bitcoin trust is coming from institutions. And therefore, we can look and see what's happening with the grayscale Bitcoin trust to get a window, to get an idea of the actions that institutions are taking. And when we can see what actions they're taking, then we can say, okay, those guys spent millions, they spent, I don't know what they spent, but they spent a lot of money before they decided to invest millions. And that, that information caused them to take action, and the action was buy Bitcoin. So I think that's really useful information, and that information is there to help you uh, take profits and avoid losses. So that concludes our news today. That, that's the, the video I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed it thoroughly. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Is there something I didn't explain very well? Or hey, maybe you'd totally disagree with what I said. I want to hear your polite disagreements down in the comments section below, and here's why. Look, you know things I don't know. I know things that you don't know. And when we share what we know with each other, we're going to grow smarter together. And I want to grow smarter with you. So share your, your polite disagreements in the comment section below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.